What's up? Dorky Deviant here. I need to preface this video by saying I'm going to try to keep this short and sweet. Again, I'm playing the PC fan translated version, and due to how similar Trails to Azure is with Zero, much of what was said in my Trails from Zero review also applies here. So check out that video if you want, and welcome to the follow-up. Well guys, I've overcome the barrier that is the crossbell problem. Ao no Kiseki. Trails to Azure. This game is the most wildest ride I've ever experienced in a JRPG. The storytelling, the events, the unveils and plot twists, they just keep coming at you the entire game. This game plants itself so deep into you, giggity, that you are thinking about what everything means, how it affects other stories and characters, and how it applies to the other Trails games. There is an unavoidable word here, lore. The lore in this game, and to a much greater degree the entire Trails series, is the best in the business, folks. And this game is the one. This game is the lore dump. You want Trails lore? You want to know how this universe is made up and how everything works? It's here. Thinking another one of your favorite story-driven games has good lore and world building? Put it against Trails to Azure and see how it stacks up. This is it, guys. This is the bar. This is the standard. Now. Let's get on with it. This game starts off with a bang. The game immediately kicks right into high gear and starts addressing loose ends from Trails from Zero, and this sets the tone for how things are going to be all game. The special support section is temporarily disbanded to work on individual strengths and training, plus there are some surprise additions in the beginning that were a welcome change to the party lineup. Wazi. Lloyd is the only remaining member at the support section building, and the game shows you his special detective training to be fully prepared in case another unthinkable circumstance like in the first game happens again. And that explains the rest of the support section's absence too. So during this time with Lloyd, clues and changes around Crossbell start to pop up, you run into some old faces, and that feeling that something is off in Crossbell starts to creep in once again. And the overall story explains that much more was happening during the last game than originally thought, and a lot of the key plot points from Trails from Zero get elaborated on and resolved. It's way too spoilery to get fully into in this video, so I'll give a more general approach. The game setup has you going through a large series of big plot points placed at multiple different parts of this 100 plus hour behemoth of a game. And as the first game, it's a slow grind to the finish. These plot points totally put your feelings on its head and expect to not be able to expect anything. This writing and narrative, story, and game world and characters just gets expanded 100 fold in this game. This game introduces so many new characters, ideas, and world growth elements just when you thought you knew something about Crossbell and Trails, coming off Trails in the Sky and Trails from Zero, you soon realize you can throw what knowledge you think you had out the window because you are about to learn. That being said, there is a whole slew of new characters to get to know that are mysterious and important to the story, especially villains. You are going to understand how the villain's hierarchy, structure, and command of power work in this game and the whole series. And don't think there isn't plenty to learn about the characters we got to know in the first game either, because despite how many new characters there are to see, the focal point is actually the characters from the first game, and boy did just about every one of them have a big reveal as to who they really are, and these elements are masterfully organized and presented to the player. Alright, now with most of the hype elements out of the way, and in case you haven't caught on yet, this game is god tier levels of hype factor. So hype factor. But this game borrows heavily from Trails from Zero. Many of the same areas, visuals, and assets are still here, and what mixes it up this time around is just how much of the things you already knew about are expanded upon. You even get to see behind some areas or a door you were wondering about from the original as well. The new areas are often shocking, there are a couple new systems put in, enhanced character tuning, more refined battle, and quite a few mini-games, and other fun things to do which are a welcome upgrade from the original, with very few, if anything, taken away that was already there. It relies heavily on the strengths from the first game and enhances them. Let's get to character tuning and battle. The battle system is identical to Trails from Zero, just with a few differences, mainly the new burst gauge. You build this gauge while battling, and it's only active during certain story parts of the game. The burst gauge allows for your characters to take continuous turns without enemy action until the gauge is depleted. It heals statuses, buffs attack power, rapidly fills CP, and arts cast immediately. It's very handy to finish off a boss too. You might think, well, doesn't that make the game too easy? Not really. The difficulty has been increased this time around, and enemies are more balanced for strategy. Also, burst is usually not available anyway. I had a lot more fun and felt more accomplished with battle this time as well. 
This leads into the next important point of character tuning, and that is the inclusion of Master Quartz. A new quartz that sets your character's main element, you can level them up, they have automatic buff attributes and sepith stats, and makes it a lot easier to unlock the most powerful arts in the game. These babies really take the depth of tuning to a very fun place. Also, there are a lot more powerful and missable items and equipment that can get you over the barrier, and doing as much side content as possible really pays off and makes the game easier. I had a lot more fun tuning and battling and collecting these rare items this time, and creating builds to basically exploit the whole game and make XP farming and bosses much easier. In closing, this game is serious, as in like, this game is a factor. It's a very well done game in a very unique way that we don't ever see. It's special. It's a bit like the emotional highs in Trails in the Sky second chapter, but with more hype and moving parts in its narrative. Trails to Azure's story structure strings you along and makes sure there is something important going on or something to look forward to at all times. Writing and characters will blow you away, and Battle is arguably the best of the first five games. The PSP era Trails games really end with a bang and on a high note with this one. This is one of the best JRPGs ever made, and Falcom shows us they have perfected this style of game with the last entry before the jump to Cold Steel's various changes. And speaking of Cold Steel, playing them for the first time will be next on the to-do list when I play Trails again for sure. I absolutely adored Trails to Azure, even if it was a long and tiring grind, and I honestly love this series that much more after getting through Zero and Azure the last two years, and waiting to play the Crossbell arc first was absolutely worth it. Well guys, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed my perspective and definitely give the Trails games a shot if you are curious about them. I haven't played a bad game in the series yet. As always, thanks for the view and we'll catch you later.